Welcome to Elevate Ed. It's the Learn Launch Accelerator and ETS Accelerate program demo day. And my first job is to say thank you to our sponsors for the demo day part of this event, um, Invictus Capital and ETS. Learn Launch Accelerator has been going for seven years. We now uh, cover three funds, 10 cohorts. You're going to see uh, members of cohorts 9 and 10 graduating tonight. And um, 66 companies have uh, now been part of our system. And you can see the statistics on our fem female and minority founded companies. So, so you know that we're actually looking for people who understand the need for change in education uh, to be a part of our, of our system. Over $85 million have been raised by our companies. And excitingly, we see every day more and more people coming together to be a part of helping these companies get ahead. Um, we have lots of mentors, lots of people in the community, all of whom are part of helping the companies grow. So what else has happened uh, since we started this seven years ago? Hmm. In 2012, there was probably about 80% of the classrooms in, uh, in North America didn't have enough bandwidth to have an online class. But today, exactly the opposite. 87% of teachers say they use digital learning in their classroom several times a week. And the list goes on and on. There's often more, to, uh, more positive to say about the change that's happening in K-12 than negative. And so if we can just focus in on where the change is, all those incremental little changes that are moving the needle day after day after day as everyone tries to make the system work better. And higher ed, has it changed any? Mm, a little bit. We just heard a whole lot about a completely uh, a more uh, effective approach. And, and at, all across the world, uh, things are changing. Back in 2012, Oh my goodness, taking something online, that was gonna be really dangerous. And today, oh yeah, lots and lots and lots of people are taking uh, courses every day. In fact, uh, you, can, uh, you can get a uh, degree from starting with a MOOC, getting a certificate, moving on to a micro master's, and then getting admitted to a, to a full uh, master's degree. Um, completely changing and democratizing uh, how to get into higher ed. So lots of change. Um, another way to think about it is where's the money? So we looked at, the, uh, at the, what's happening just in New England and found over $280 million uh, raised by 30 companies in the Massachusetts and New England area. And we're up to about 350 ed tech companies in the Massachusetts EdTech ecosystem. So bringing together the strategic players, the growth companies, uh, VC-backed companies, and hiding under that early stage button, mm, I don't know, another 200 companies. Um, really, in the last few years, this has completely changed. If we went back and looked at this same slide from us f even four years ago, we'd find about three companies in the growth category and we'd find about six in the VC-backed companies. So companies are moving across and, um, and starting to get market adoption to really make a change um, in the industry. And what else has happened? Uh, workforce ed tech, we usually call people who are working on skilling and reskilling the workforce, the, the entry of workforce ed tech. These are the companies that are really getting in, either selling to the workplace or working with higher ed to increasingly improve the intersection between the, the workplace and the, um, and the higher ed experience so that there isn't this sharp divide that seems to somehow have been created in, in, the, in the system to date. Um, we, we, we see a really high rate of company formation going on. 
very diverse set of funders, often impact-driven, very diverse set of founders who actually understand where's the gap in the system. So my partner, Tatiana's going to tell you a couple more stories. So funding is one of the stories that is very important to everybody, and it has been always very difficult and remains so, especially for very early stage companies. Uh, but we see some improvement here too, and um, what you see on the slides is the is the courtesy of Holon IQ, uh, a company that uh, uh, is uh, doing amazing ad tech market uh, research. Uh, based on the proprietary database of today 19,000 transactions. And as you can see, AdTech started the decade with about half a billion uh, the dollar of venture capital investments in 2010. And this number grew 14 times over seven years to seven billion last year. And it was, the historical high was the year before 2018 with 8.5 billion. So Holon IQ uh, predicts that the, uh, another 87 billion are going to be deployed in ad tech worldwide in the dec decade to come, which is great. You can see that there are markets out there that are very hungry and they are growing really rapidly, such as China, which already today accounts for 52% of global ad tech investments, followed by the US with uh, 33%. But money is not enough to grow ad tech companies, and we know that. And it takes a lot of human capital to move the needle for them. And uh, this human capital, it comes in a lot of different flavors. And speaking of flavors, here is our little candy bar for entrepreneurs. Uh, we have a network of 100, uh, more than 170 mentors, as Jean mentioned, that work with our portfolio. They come from different avenues of uh, ad tech business uh, and uh, uh, including, of course, education practitioners too. We have a network of business partners that work with our companies and provide them discounted services and other perks, among other things. We have a network of uh, follow-on funders and we work with our companies to find best match to meet their needs. And we have also a network of pilots, uh, of pilot partners, who, of educational institutions who keep their doors open and allow us to test the products and roll them out school-wide. And um, with uh, a great partner that we have on board, uh, Educational Testing Service, uh, this candy bar has an additional uh, layer, and even more than one. And with ETS, we are now able to offer even better support for enhanced efficacy testing and deploy pilots in real life test bats uh, through their network of, uh, of partners. And with this wealth of human capital, we believe that we can offer truly personalized experience uh, to the companies that we work with, uh, created around personalized milestones that keep everybody stay focused and be very successful. This is our awesome team, and we would especially like uh, to thank Ben. And in case you have not met him yet, I don't know if he's in the room. Ben, if you can wave the hand. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, in case you haven't met him, we put, uh, to, uh, we put the imp to emphasize the importance, we put them into this red bubble in the middle of the slide. Thank you so much uh, to you and the, to the team that you led for uh, helping uh, make everything uh, happen today seamlessly. Uh, thank you, thank you. And last but not least, we also would like to thank uh, our venture partners with whom we would not be able to provide this great support to the companies we worked with. And Brady, uh, sitting over there, thank you. Kirby Salerno, uh, Steve Shapiro, Matt Rubens, Eric Cantor, Bobby Babra, um, Rita Ferrandino, and of course, uh, Richard Barn and uh, Amy Tavir from, from ETS. And while Richard will start to walk up slowly on stage, we are going to leave this uh, slide on for you. And uh, this uh, here you can see the companies that uh, are going to present themselves in less than two minutes. 
and uh, you see also the range of important problems that uh, these companies are addressing from implementing innovating, innovative assessment methodologies in K-12 through uh, student success uh, topics during their academic and uh, career journey. So stay on, and thank you so much, Richard, for this great support that we have from you. Thanks, Tatiana. Thanks, Jean. Tatiana, as you can probably see from that presentation, why ETS uh, selected Learn Launch in a competitive process to be the first outsourced accelerator and really the first equity investing process ETS has done in its over 72 years history, and we've had nothing but positive results from it. So I want to thank them for this work. They've brought us outstanding resources, support, access to companies we would never have seen otherwise, and the opportunity to pair ETS resources with some of the coolest, most fun to work with entrepreneurs you're ever going to have a chance to see. So thank you all for coming. Let's have a chance to look at these great companies. How can a teacher gather a class of students into teams for testing water quality? Learning the nitrogen cycle or understanding ecological interactions? How can a teacher use one centering system to teach many, many STEM concepts? This aquaponics ecosystem from Just Learn supports inquiry-based instruction. The market for this product can range from fifth to eighth grade. Future follow-on modules will increase the range of science concepts. One of Just Learn's customers said, the more I work with Planet Box, the more stoked I get about it. It brings real world science experiences right to the students. Let's hand this to Gmo, a visionary entrepreneur from Mozambique. All right. I hope the slides work. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jimmo and I'm the founder of Just Learn. And I wanna start today by asking you, in a world that is increasingly urbanized and technological and online, how is the upcoming generation going to learn about the outside world? What, what are we going to do to bridge this disconnect to the outside and to the elements? And so, uh, Just Learn is, is really built on two fundamental beliefs. The first is that we absolutely need more environmental science and engineering. Now, environmental science is more important than ever, and especially if we are to own and address the biggest challenges of our time. And the second is we need to do this through hands-on learning. Uh, hands-on learning is just the most effective way to learn. So the good news, is, as depicted in this graph for advanced placement for the decade ending in 2016, is that environmental science is the second fastest growing subject in STEM by enrollment. Uh, it is second only to computer science, which is a much smaller subject by volume. Today, there are more students enrolled in environmental science than there are in chemistry. And it is also the most effective science as a feeder or gateway to the hard sciences, such as biology. So the bad news, however, is that there is a very apparent trade-off uh, for STEM tools for hands-on learning. Makerspaces, for example, as uh, many of you might know, uh, offer tremendous engagement, but they are just inaccessible to most school systems. And often, at best, they offer elective or extracurricular settings, not so much core. Uh, you might also have seen the emergence and the popularity of uh, green tech, uh, hydroponic systems, and even greenhouses, but even those are notorious for being expensive, huge overhead, uh, hard to use, and just not designed for teachers. So that's where we come in with PlanetBox. PlanetBox offers as many, if not more, touch points than a greenhouse, while being more affordable and much easier to use than just about any equivalent uh, hydroponic system in the market. So Planet Box is comprised of a fish tank, a grow bed, uh, and a specially engineered biofilter. Uh, it is uh, a way to exhibit and, and demonstrate the most important cycles of our planet and of life uh, through a symbiosis relationship as a form of a micro ecosystem that is brought to life right inside the classroom over a course of weeks, months, and even semesters. The way aquaponics works is that fish waste is nitrified through aerobic bacteria into a fertilizer for plants, and the plants in return filter the water back for the fish. 
So not only is it a model for sustainability, but it is an irresistible tool of engagement for students. What we've done is really straightforward. We've simply paired the existing science behind Planet Box into the existing curriculum uh, in middle and high schools. And the net result, really, is being able to turn the vast majority of curriculum already present in these age gaps into hands-on activities, especially where the students spend most of their times already. So our vision for Planet Box is, is to expand beyond environmental science and into STEM as a whole. We're building modules to expand into electricity, computer science, as well as niche biology courses such as Mendelian genetics. And we're consolidating all of our tools into a digital platform, a web app, uh, that will facilitate in the logistical management as well as showcase the video tutorial series, not to mention alignment of curriculum for teachers. So in summary, uh, Planet Box is a really affordable, easy to use, very scalable and super interdisciplinary method of turning most science curriculum in K-12 into hands-on interactive learning. And we have pretty good traction. In just the last year, we went to market. We're serving today 10,000 students, and we're serving them in some of the biggest districts in the country, uh, many of which are top 10 and are in Florida, as well as some in, in the New England uh, region. Um, so with that, we have a very clear path to achieving 100,000 students served in just the next 12 to 18 months. We have a replicable sales model, and we're extremely excited to roll out our SaaS platform, uh, which will really uh, apply a recurring revenue model on our, on our uh, products. Uh, not to brag, but uh, Learn Launch really is just about the best uh, ad tech team in the country, and uh, I couldn't be more privileged to work very closely with them. And I just want to ask for help in saving the planet. The time is really urgent, and we have the right product to do that. Thank you. What if every kid could build their own robot, their own weather station, their own drone? What if every kid invented their own creations using components and sensors that engineers at Intel and Microsoft use to invent new products? What if kids could build these projects to solve real-world challenges like climate change or create medical advancements? This is Thimble's vision. Thimble brings age-appropriate but sophisticated curriculum and kits to school to teach industry-level computer science and IT skills. Thimble's curriculum aligns to national standards and delivers alongside comprehensive training for teachers. Their hands-on circuit board kits are reusable, relevant, and great for team-based learning. Here's Oscar Pedroso, co-founder and CEO of Thimble, to tell you more. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Oscar Pedroso, and I'm just going to start over here. All right, excellent. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to two sisters. Tyra and Monica Hux. Like my parents, their parents are immigrants from Honduras. Their parents make minimum wage, and they can barely afford to put food on the table. Yet these two sisters wake up every single day excited to go to school because they have one dream. They want to be aeronautical engineers and fly into outer space one day. Unfortunately, their school district is one of the worst school districts in the country. And without the right affordable and curriculum aligned programs, they and millions of other students won't have what they need to pursue their dreams to go into technology. But not if we have anything to do with it. Uh, my name is Oscar Pedroso, first generation college grad, former math teacher, and founder and CEO of Thimble. And I'm here today to share our story and hopefully partner with you in some way after the pitch today. So, Let's start off with the problem here. US employers are struggling to find qualified workers with skills in computer science and information technology. 67% of all new jobs within the next decade are going to require skills in computer science and information technology, but most schools don't teach these subjects. In fact, 45% of schools have the modern training tools and curriculum to teach these students the necessary skills to succeed in the digital economy. But that's where Thimble comes in introducing a fun, relevant, and state-of-the-art curriculum for K-12 through schools. Our curriculum consists of 15 projects that teach students engineering, programming, and IT skills. 
We have professional development to help teachers implement this curriculum in the classroom or an after school program. And then we also have a software that has instructions, tutorials, and lesson plans. So these kits go beyond the scope of toys. These are real life circuit connecting kits. Examples are basic circuits, a Wi-Fi robot, a weather station. You can even build your own synthesizer in a couple of hours. Now think about that for a second. How cool would it have been to become your own DJ in sixth grade science class? How much more engaging could that be? We got started on Kickstarter three years ago, selling directly to consumers. But in the meantime, we created a multi-kit product and a sophisticated curriculum that we're now rolling out in 60 schools. We've done a little over 250K in revenue and have reached over 10,000 students. We make money selling an annual recurring subscription that schools use to deploy in their own classrooms or programs. While we have pricing that starts at $3,500, we do have micro pilots, so for any teachers or administrators in the audience, we would love for you to give us a try. Uh, $1,500, for example, would get you a five reusable kits which can serve up to 100 students, professional development, and a one-year subscription. So Thimble is part of a multi-billion dollar project-based economy. Right now, the K through 12 digital curriculum market is growing at 16% annually. We're starting with secondary schools, but then we're going to expand to secondary schools and elementary schools, and then expand to international markets. We've been able to get into schools through state vendor contracts, groups like the Smithsonian, and we've been able to work with small pilots, smaller schools where we've been able to get feedback and build our credibility. Our team has been working together for over five years. We have experience working with schools, universities, and big tech companies. We have a group of advisors in our corner, and we've also won awards in the education space for making education more accessible to women, underrepresented groups, and students with disabilities. So our company trajectory over the next five years is to build a cumulative base, school base, of 1,100 schools. And we plan to be a $20 million company within the next five years. And that's just the beginning. So our ask for you today, uh, for, for school pilots, any teachers or administrators in, in the room, we'd love to start a micro pilot with you. Corporate sponsors has been a way that we started working with schools as well. If you have a mission to support STEM education or workforce development, we would love to find ways to help you serve schools in your communities. And lastly, for any investors, we'd be happy to talk to you about our growth plan over the next three to five years. So in closing, for students like Tyra and Monica, we are not just changing kids' educational experiences, nor are we changing what they believe they can do with themselves. We are changing who society sees as an engineer, a technologist, and a scientist. And we are the brand that tomorrow's tech leaders will finally look back on as their childhood inspiration. Thank you. Look at this video of a modern day classroom. Imagine 30 students working on their own projects in a student-led learning environment. Realistically, for a teacher to keep up, you'd have to clone yourself a number of times to coach and advise every step of the way. The Spindle platform allows students to own their own work and manage progress by gathering peer insights and feedback. The platform allows teachers in or out of the classroom to review progress without stunting it. Importantly, teachers, administrators, and students can all monitor achievement on learning to learn. These two fast-moving teachers from Vancouver founded Spindle less than a year ago. Please welcome Jacqueline and Christina. Hi, my name is Christina Chechos, and for the last seven years, my co-founder Jackie and I were in the classroom teaching these student-led initiatives, project-based learning, STEAM, whatever the buzzword you choose is. The goal was we wanted our students to build the skills to learn for themselves. More and more schools are adopting these methods because they understand that learnability is the most important skill needed to succeed in the workplace. And so our classrooms looked like this. We constantly got our students to put themselves out there, hone their skills, try again, but we couldn't keep up because students need a constant sounding board for their ideas in order to move forward. Much the way that we do as adults. I mean, we rely on peers. We have staff meetings, workshops, we use Slack in order to get things done. So why can't our students too? 
We need to rethink the flow of work in a classroom so that our students are building the skills to operate in the modern workplace. Spindle is being adopted in schools as a classroom-based social network for students to direct and manage their own learning. So students set goals, and it's their peers that inspire them, challenge them, support them, so they can iterate on their own. So now progress is no longer bottlenecked at the teacher. Teachers are using our social threads to see the students move through the stages of a project more independently. So for example, take Xander. He is in a class that's currently working on a passion project. He's going to share updates on his progress to a thread, and each time he does that, he has to self-assess on skills in order to set goals. He shares a little bit about what he's currently working on and identifies what he needs help with. So this post will show up on a peer feed where he gets insight and feedback on his ideas. Having this audience is what compels him to put forth his best self. It's also what inspires him to bend, break, and blend his ideas. So students are constantly re-engaging each other in their learning. They have that sounding board. Xander is then able to build on his ideas on his own, take ownership of his learning, and iterate. And now me as a teacher, I can see that incremental learning process. I can see the skill development start to finish for all of my students and for any project, because Spindle's framework is flexible enough to accommodate any style of student-led learning. Speaking of students, our early data indicates that our social learning network is helping improve the foundational skills required to learn how to learn. So this data came from the seven pilots that we ran earlier last year. Um, as was mentioned, we started in March, we're early. Um, we're in the second phase of piloting, we're running micropilots. We've got 29 schools who signed up in the last three months alone. And we've even generated interest outside of the K-12 space from three schools of education who see Spindle as a way to teach pre-service teachers how to reimagine the workflow in a classroom. This is why we think that by 2022, we can be in well over 500 schools. And our plan for this, right now, we're going to roll our micropilots into more in-depth paid pilots, building out our team of champions who will advocate for Spindle as we sell classroom and school bundles in the fall with introductory pricing. And we have a plan to interoperate with LMSs and suites as we sell into districts. Gagan, thank goodness, uh, has the technical background that Jackie and myself obviously don't. Um, but we are building a team of advisors and champions who are getting behind our vision, which is if schools want to scale these student-led initiatives, then they need a system that moves teachers away from just managing learning to mentoring learners. Come say hello. SpeakAgent is a uniquely effective digital teaching platform. It delivers a mix of individual and team activities for mastering key academic concepts. SpeakAgent fits right into a school's curriculum for K-8 math, science, and reading. The result is faster learning. Students learn how words and concepts connect to each other using listening, speaking, reading, and writing. For many kids, it's the missing piece Meet Maya, a seventh grader at Kip, Kansas City, who reads below grade level. Her teacher says she started the year very negative about reading. With Speak Agent, she began whizzing through her units. Her reading scores jumped up 22% to 83% in just nine weeks. Now, Maya says reading is her favorite time of day. All right, Ben, tell us more. All right, hi, I'm Ben Grimley. CEO and co-founder of SpeakAgent, I'm here to tell you more. So SpeakAgent accelerates learning in K-8 math, science, oh, where is that oh. clicker? Here we go. Green button, yeah. Okay, great. The SpeakAgent accelerates learning in K-8 math, reading, and science, and we do this by, uh, by addressing the number one predictor of school success, which is academic language. And I'm here today to offer you the opportunity to make a transformational impact 
on students learning like Maya. Um, and those students who find themselves on the wrong side of the achievement gap. Gosh, this is. Uh, sorry, I'm, okay, there we go. Okay, so academic language consists of the words and the concepts that students need to learn their course content. So let's role play a little bit. Okay, class, so we're learning about the water cycle today. What comes next after evapotranspiration? Do you guys know? What, you don't, you don't remember that word from last year? So this is where students get stuck, right? And what we do at Speak Agent is we give students the context that they need to get unstuck. So we do this for English learners, for Title I students, for struggling readers, any of the 33 million students in the US who do not have the academic language they need to succeed at school. So what's different about us is we're not just doing definitions and flashcards. We use listening, speaking, reading, and writing, as well as great visual aids to communicate the key academic concepts. And then we do that not just through words, but using sentences, stories, word problems, puzzle games. And then we tie this to the curriculum that the school's already using in math, reading, and science. So we're adapting to them. They are not adapting to us. And that is what makes SpeakAid Speak Agent truly effective. How effective? So a slew of third-party studies, three independent controlled studies, found that students who use SpeakAgent over a 12-week period triple their gains in mastering STEM concepts. And then we found, through a, a new study with Lean Lab Education and KIPP Foundation, um, that students' reading scores jumped by 25% in just a nine-week period. So this is not just data to us. This is about making a life-changing impact on students like Maya. And that's why we want to partner with you to scale Speak Agent to more students. So our strategy is growing with our customers as they experience success. So let's say a school starts with science, and then they see the great student engagement and the teacher enthusiasm, so now they add math. And then they're like, well, let's go up some more grade levels. And then pretty much they're, they're using us throughout, right? And that's the vision for Speak Agent, growing within customers as they succeed. So our product roadmap is we have 270 units of study that we've already built that our schools and districts or our customers use today, K through eight, at 70% of the content that we need to cover K through eight. And so our next step in the roadmap is building out the remaining 30%. And our business model is selling to schools and districts on a subscription basis. Um, we charge basically per year based on the number of subjects and the grade bands that they use. And on the right-hand side, you'll see uh, our K-12 institutional bookings, both historically and projected. So today, we have three of the top 50 school districts in the United States who have implemented Speak Agent. Um, we've also partnered with um, you know, top tier researchers and we've gotten great funding for our R&D through philanthropic and federal grants. What's great about the research partnerships is it's all third party and independent. So that's where our impact research comes from. It's a core value for us to constantly research. In fact, we have two new studies that we're exploring with the NIH and with ETS. And our founding team has been together for four years. I have a 15 year track record in developing great, highly impactful education technology products. My co-founder and CTO, Katie Cunningham, leads the tech team. Uh, so she does the actual work. And then Dan LaFountain, our last co-founder, is sales and marketing. We are all former teachers who are teachable and we are highly committed for the long haul. So thank you so much and please come and talk to me afterwards. Indigo helps people understand, understand themselves, their peers and teammates, and their students. 
This year, these capabilities have been repackaged for easy rollout in schools. Designed for middle and high school students, the Indigo online course and assessment are being delivered in over 90 schools. This helps lead to more meaningful college and career plans. Teachers and administrators love the data collected for easy use. Indigo empowers students and educators in three areas. Self-awareness, know yourself, empathy, know your team, and freedom, know your possibilities. Please welcome Sherry to tell us more. So I want you for a moment to just remember in your heart the teacher that changed your life. And I'm assuming that you are feeling gratitude and love because those life-changing connections are the real power of education. I'm Sherry Smith, the CEO and founder of the Indigo Education Company, and I'm here to share how Indigo's AI-enabled solutions build student success through human connection. Schools are under significant pressure to prepare students for the future and meet their individual needs. I can't tell you how many times I've been in schools and the entire staff is, claim, is exclaiming, there's not enough time. Mental health stresses are increasing and students are feeling disconnected and unprepared for the workplace. We've worked with over 100,000 students and every single one has a story. I'll share Jay Lynn's story as she illustrates this problem of being lost in the system so clearly. When Jay Lynn entered an inner city high school that we're partnered with as a freshman, she was reading at a fifth grade level. She had been bullied horribly and she hardly spoke her first year. Indigo's solutions made the difference between Jay Lynn becoming a high school dropout to this year becoming a confident college accepted senior. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Our integrated technology suite supports social emotional health, career readiness, retention, and student success in middle schools, high schools, and higher ed. Let's see how our solutions work for Jalen. Our program starts with the Indigo assessment. The assessment measures behaviors, motivators, soft skills, social emotional perceptions, and strengths. Importantly, it's taken by both the students and the educators as a shared experience. A comprehensive report is generated that provides whole person, whole school insights. I met with Jay Lynn a couple weeks ago, now in the middle of her senior year, and she could remember all four of her Indigo reports, all of her scores, how she's changed, and she could talk about how it really contributed to a positive self-image. And the teachers told me that if they didn't have the Indigo, they would have had no idea how to engage her inner brilliance and help her to shine. Students unpack their Indigo assessment reports with Indigo Activate, our college and career mapping software. The course software generates meaningful college and career plans that meet state requirements in 28 states. Jay Lynn realized that she was a social entrepreneur and was thrilled when she got accepted to ASU's business program. All of the information in the assessment and in Indigo Activate, the course mapping software, is viewed by educators, educators via Indigo Discover. Our AI-enabled platform allows educators to discover deep answers at the touch of a button. This actionable data saves teachers time in getting to know their students and automatically generating classrooms and groups that will get along. Indigo supercharges counselors with highly individualized, personalized career recommendations and communication tips. At-risk students are quickly identified and interventions are personalized for success. Administrators know who their students and their staff, staff are and can make better decisions. We've spent a lot of time at Indigo working with schools across the country and I lost my paper. <laughs> Throughout that time, over 100,000 assessments have been taken. We've worked in over 90 secondary schools, 20 universities, 
and we've generated over 1.5 million in cumulative revenue. I actually need my Okay, our SaaS business model charges a modest price per student. We have a new retention products for, for colleges coming out, and we, generate, we predict this will generate over four million per year in revenue. The US military has started using us, and we have international customers. We recently hired our first professional sales support and are pursuing a $1 million revenue goal for this year. We have 12 million employees with our leadership team ready for scale. Our board has deep connections and we are the right team to make Indigo a national brand, helping students across the country find their intrinsic genius and chart their course to a fulfilling future. We'd love to see you tomorrow at our booth right out front and thank you very much. Very well-meaning people brought in testing to see if students were getting an equal education. Well, what they failed to understand is that, as the Todd Rose book points out, there is no average. Mindprint's easy-to-administer assessment has now been rolled out in schools in a number of scenarios, often used with students assigned to targeted tutoring. But recently, combined with professional development, the product can be used in general screening. Here you see Nancy delivering the Intro to the Science of Learning training. This has been delivered to districts like Cincinnati Public Schools and Groton Public Schools. Hold on to your hats, folks. You are about to see one of the most effective attacks on the achievement gap waged in the last couple of decades. Helping classroom teachers know how to effectively restructure the content to learner capabilities. Now this is personalized learning. Take it away, Nancy. Hi, I'm Nancy Weinstein. I'm the founder and CEO of Mindprint Learning. Mindprint, like a fingerprint, because no mind is unique. Every mind is unique, excuse me. <laughs> my whole line there. Anyway, um, we are, in fact, the only platform that can measure cognitive skills at scale. That means how students learn, not their math achievement, not their reading comprehension, but their memory, their uh, complex reasoning, their processing speed, and their executive functions, attention, working memory. NASA uses it for their astronauts, and I'm going to explain to you why teachers are using it in all K-12 classrooms. So no surprise here that we spend a lot of money on K-12 assessments. We spend a lot of time and a lot of money. We are not getting the outcomes that we need to have. We have stagnant grades and we have a widening achievement gap, as well as worsening mental health. There's a good reason for this. We're measuring the wrong thing. So the evidence of over 50 years of research is abundantly clear. When we understand how students learn their cognitive skills, what Mindprint measures, then we can build a foundation to develop their academic skills, their social emotional skills, and that is what leads to outcomes. And as the, the pyramid on the right shows, that is the opposite of where we are spending money. There is a complete misalignment. So let me give you an example of how this works. We all know we want to measure reading comprehension. That's the target. But when students struggle, it's for different reasons. We need to understand those underlying different reasons if we want to help them succeed. Here's what it looks like in practice. This would be a typical report that a classroom teacher would have. They would know each student's academic scores and they would group students based on what they know, their reading comprehension scores. They put Ernie and Timothy together because they're reading at the same level. However, when we overlay that same data on mind print, verbal reasoning on the x-axis, processing speed on the y-axis, becomes abundantly clear that though their grades are the same, the reasons that they are struggling are profoundly different. And when teachers see this, they finally know what to give the student to succeed and actually move outcomes. So there you see Ernie and Timothy in their different quadrants. So how does this work in practice? One hour online, easy to administer, at scale only every two to three years. Practically speaking, 
teachers can look at this chart and they know what to give each student in their room for the very first time. And what they need to give, they are familiar with. But for the first time, they can give the right student the right strategy at the right time. Every student gets what they need. So we've delivered over 9,000 assessments worldwide. We have the typical hockey stick in our projections, but actually what you can see here is we're getting our growth from within our existing schools, assessing more students, as well as within our network, and we're getting network effects from superintendents telling their friends. This is game changing. We also get ancillary revenues from the tutoring market where our assessments can be used to increase standardized test scores. Not surprisingly, we've got a lot of awards for what we're doing, which is unique and different, as well as working with our partners, um, publishing our own book for those of you who do Universal Design for Learning and our friends at CAST who are sitting in the audience. Thank you. We have an amazing team who are experienced and ready to deliver on what we can do here. So why MindPrint? We have a unique solution to a multi-billion dollar pervasive problem. There is not a superintendent in the country that is not worried about moving their outcomes. We have a solution that is game changing and different and works. And you can imagine it bleeds over into markets that you are all interested in. Social emotional learning, college, workforce, and our competitive advantage grows with every student we assess. I'll leave it to you to imagine the possibilities of what you can do with a data set that is the only longitudinal data set of the developing brain. So with that, thank you very much, and we hope to see you at our booth outside. Mastering a foreign language is really hard. Learning abstract grammar concepts, memorizing vocabulary, it can take a very long time, cost a lot of money, and end up being a very frustrating experience. Not with B-Tools. The company created a technology-enabled learning environment that is engaging, standards-aligned, and highly personalized. Students can learn how to speak in a virtual classroom and practice grammar and vocabulary right on her phone, on her way to school or work. And the teacher in B-Tools classroom needs to focus only on areas that the student struggles with. B-Tools home market is Brazil, where the company is quickly growing its basic subscribers and building exciting partnerships to reach younger learners in the K-12 market. The company's founder, Fabio, will tell you more. Hi. Brazil should have a booming economy this year. Right now, there are thousands of job openings every single day. Most of these jobs have one requirement. People need to speak English. Easy, right? Except that 97% of the population is not. That's almost 200 million people. Most of these people are studying, but they're just not learning. It's a $2 billion market, and people are not learning. Why? Because people have changed a lot in the past six years. Schools have not. I'm Fabio from B-Tools, and I worked for 11 years in this field, and I saw this happening over and over. One of our students, Paola, came to our location in Curitiba, in Brazil. She's a chemical engineer, and she had just failed another job in interview. Although she had studied in a couple of English schools before, she could never meet the spoken English requirements. Well, there are a lot of companies doing amazing job to help education, but the problem, in, the problem is they are all trying to improve an obsolete model. We changed that. So B-Tools combines bleeding edge technology with a new uh, hybrid learning method that helps students to reach fluency faster. First, you use AI for gathering data and speaking analysis. And VR is used in every single class. We created two complete virtual reality series where the student is a character in the first person, bringing real immersion to the classroom. All the data from the student's performance is sent in real time to their face-to-face -face teacher who can provide individual feedback. This way we have micro-assessments in every class, which means we can identify and correct learning gaps immediately. VR, uh, AI, big data, gamification, adaptive learning, face-to-face -face teacher. 
This way you can make education immersive, measurable, individualized, and multimodal. Because of this, we can take students from level A1 to B2, four times faster than any other English school or app, and you use ETS exams to prove that. We are a team of 35 people passionate about changing education. Last year, we were accelerated by both Singularity University and Learn Launch. We also partnered with ETS, and we're working together in a couple of projects this year, right, Richard? And we deliver our courses through the franchising model in Brazil, and we have just started with the K-12 schools as well. We're running a very big project from next month. Last year, last year, we have grown the number of schools from five to 30, with 10 times the number of students. And our projections to this year is to reach 70 schools, uh, increase the number of students by five times. This way, we can translate it into $3 million revenue. At Vtools, we use technology to transform the classroom, to transform education. When you transform education, we create opportunities. When we create opportunities, we transform people's lives. Five, years, uh, five months ago, Paola came to us desperate for help. And after five months, she passed her job interview. And with flying color, just before Christmas, she got the job she always wanted as a chemical engineer in an international company. In order to grow economies, we need a workforce that can step up into these jobs. And we need B-tools for that. Thank you very much. Data analyst, bank teller, retail clerk, these three jobs have one major requirement in common. They need to know how to work in teams. Meet CogniLearn, an easy to integrate software that turns classes into immersive team-based learning experiences. As this methodology becomes required in higher ed and corporate training, this company will take off. Many US medical schools now deliver at least one course in team-based learning. Working with these hard-to-please customers has honed CogniLearn's customer service capabilities. Brian is a former airline executive and now has his own team in Singapore flying in close formation to scale up this product and training offering. Take it away, Brian. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm the founder of CogniLearn. We're built to help people prepare for the industry 4.0 world with team-based learning. Half the jobs will vanish in the next 20 years, but not to worry, new jobs will take hold, but the skill sets will be different. Unfortunately, the old education model isn't preparing people with these collaborative, complex, critical problem-solving skills. I saw this firsthand going from airline CFO to teaching airline management in a university classroom. Team-based learning is a solution. Here's how it works. It starts by eliminating the lecture completely, replacing it with slides, videos, readings. Students come into class, take an individual test, followed by a team test with immediate feedback, which increases outcomes by 20%. Faculty then can just clarify any trouble spots, and then teams apply what they learned to solve relevant problems, which bridges theory with practice. Finally, there's a 360-degree teammate evaluation, which drives accountability. Most education technology was designed for individuals, not for teams. This results in a lot of clunky paper-based processes, cobbling together five different tools to do the job of one. What we do is we streamline team cases, quizzes, and 360-degree teammate evaluations. It saves faculty time, improves outcomes with real-time data, and integrates with existing systems. With over 100 configurations for team-based learning, we can make any individual learning environment quickly into a team-based learning environment. Healthcare has understood the importance of teams for years. And now 75% of the medical schools use team-based learning. They're making the classroom look like the operating room. Today, this matters more than ever. Zoom and Slack are some of the most hottest performing companies that are collaboration tools. Atlassian, a $30 billion market cap company, its ticker symbol is team. The fastest growing product in the history of Microsoft is Microsoft Teams. The market is giving clear signals on the importance of teamwork in the economy. And in educational institutions will need to deliver on this skill set or they risk becoming irrelevant. We have 45 paying customers in higher education, workforce training, and schools, all operating on the same platform. 
although we're primarily focused on higher education, we believe there's wide applicability for this solution. We've been traditionally product focused. We have no salespeople at all. And we convert about 50% of our trials into paying customers. We operate on a B2B SaaS model, about $40 per student per year with about a $5,000 average order size. In the future, we'll add professional development opportunities and advanced features in our platform. We have a 13-person full-time team led by myself and Mark. Previously, before education, I was CFO of an airline where we grew from 400 to 800 employees in under 18 months, and then we sold the business to Virgin for $100 million. Our CTO, Mark, previously was a CTO of another SaaS model startup, and also the head of IT at MediaTrack until the business was sold. Today, where we're at is we have a validated product. We're on our third generation. It's ISO certified, global servers, GDPR compliant, and we also have a couple hundred thousand of run rate revenue. We feel like we validated the product, we validated the need. What's next for us is to build a sales engine, hire our first sales rep, build out advanced features. As we move forward, we'll make use of the data we have. We already have 100,000 team and individual assessments on our databases, develop additional predictive and analytical tools. And finally, what we aspire to do is lead the market, reinvent the webinar, reinvent online learning with teams, the same way Zoom and Slack have started to reinvent collaboration in the workplace. With that, we'll be at the Future Work Showcase tomorrow. We're happy to connect with anyone that wants to learn or talk more about teams, how it could be used in your institution, or how you might want to support the scaling of teamwork in education. Thanks for your time, and have a great night. College is a time of excitement, opportunity, and complexity. Students have hundreds of decisions to make and responsibilities to fulfill. Schools do their best to help, offering support services and resources to navigate the journey. But with so much information coming their way, students are easily overwhelmed, and many important resources go undiscovered and unused. What students really need is that one consistent place they can turn to for answers and advice. And now that place exists. Inscribe helps schools simplify student support Using digital communities and a powerful AI engine, Inscribe connects students to the help they need, no matter the topic or the time of day. Inscribe has helped more than 75,000 students to date and continues to grow through partnerships with schools and providers across the country. Tell us more, Katie. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie. I am co-founder and CEO at Inscribe. And we are all about leveraging the power of community and artificial intelligence to connect students with the answers and resources they need to succeed. Because let's be honest, students in higher ed need a lot of help. Whether it's from advisors, teachers, even alumni, it's the feedback that they get from these individuals that can make the difference between success and failure. But unfortunately, the process of getting this help today is totally broken. Emails go unanswered, meetings are hard to schedule, so students are waiting hours or even days for help, and experts are answering the same questions over and over again. But if only that were it. Because of the highly siloed nature of higher education, students are not having to navigate this complexity once, but having to do it over and over again. And why do we care about this? Well, let's go back to what Scott told us in the keynote earlier. Think about what student expectations are, on demand, anytime, anywhere, open access. Layer on top of that the 64% of students who are working, the 25% who have kids at home. We are setting up a system that not only doesn't meet expectations, but is setting these students up for failure. And this all comes at a time when universities themselves are under tremendous pressure to not only improve outcomes, but to reduce costs. And one of the main reasons that it's expected for colleges to go under, they lack the efficiencies to deliver a high quality experience at affordable price. And that's where we come in. So Inscribe helps institutions simplify and improve the support process without the need to hire additional resources. And here's how it works. So Inscribe creates a single engagement layer that cuts across the traditional silos of higher education. So now when a student needs help, they have one place to go no matter the topic or the time of day. Under the covers, Inscribe is building digital communities that connect students with the experts at their institution. So when they need help, they can turn to their community to ask questions. 
individual communities can actually be customized so they can focus on spe specific parts of the academic journey. The expert can focus just in the area that is really their domain, but for students, they have one place to go. All of the information and conversations in Inscribe are tagged and saved. So every generation of students is actually benefiting and learning from the conversations that came before them. Over time, we're helping institutions build a knowledge repository that can be shared across multiple groups and over multiple semesters. So Inscribe is all about letting humans do what they do best. Unlike other systems in the marketplace, we are a human-first system, and we believe in human connection to help each other build relationships and solve complicated problems. Unfortunately, humans can't be everywhere all the time. And that's where Rosie comes in. Rosie is the artificial intelligence layer that sits underneath Inscribe and helps to take on the tasks that humans either can't or simply don't want to do. So answering questions over and over and identifying those high priority issues in students that really need help. Even just identifying things that you know, aren't useful or relevant anymore. By taking on these tasks, Rosie frees up the humans to do the human connections and the collaboration that they're really meant to do. We've had the opportunity to work with some amazing organizations across the United States, both institutional customers and channel partners. Um, and as the video mentioned, we've helped over 75,000 students find the answers they need. We're also really excited about our impact. So just one quick story. We've done some work with ASU. They redesigned their first year math course, um, college algebra, and included Inscribe as the primary mechanism by which students would get support. And in just one year, ASU was able to improve outcomes in that course by 20% and decrease their support costs by 40%. So you really can improve the experience while saving money. Our team has been working together in the higher ed education um, technology space for over 20 years. We have built technology that has delivered learning to millions of students every year. And we have had solutions that have been named by Fast Company as top, top 10 most innovative education companies. So we absolutely know the space. We're very passionate about it. And we know how to deliver. So at Inscribe, we really believe that every student should have access to the information that they need to be successful, and we are on a mission to make that happen. Thank you so much. Um, we are, come find me at the Expo later. We're also in the Future of Workforce Showcase tomorrow, so I would love to meet you all and share more of our story. Cheers. How can employers identify and hire the people with the skills they need when the systems for finding these people are broken? How can people with non-standard backgrounds demonstrate their skills to employers? We need a simple system to redefine the hiring process. Skillist is an identity-blind, skills-based hiring platform that has been doing just that, showing employers how to redefine what they are looking for and providing a match based on ability. The result? Opening the door for talent who would be traditionally passed over during the screening process, but would be great fits. This catalyzes real progress and begins to remove bias from hiring. Here is Skillist co-founder and CEO, Anand, to tell you about it. When Leonardo da Vinci invented the resume in 1482, it was a novel idea. But the fact that the resume is still the primary tool used in hiring today is a massive issue. At Skillist, we're working to bring hiring out of the Middle Ages by making it possible for companies to hire the best people based on what they can do instead of where they come from. The challenges with resume-based application systems are especially pernicious when it comes to non-technical hiring, because things like human skills, power skills, soft skills don't often show up on a resume. And the results and the negative impacts are twofold. First, a lot of people who actually could fill jobs in customer service, sales, administration, often don't end up, end up applying because they don't realize that they actually can do the job. Their resume doesn't look like it checks all the boxes. And so companies' talent pools are artificially restricted. But beyond that, when all you have to go off of is a person's resume and the chronological history of where they worked or where they went to school, there's a flawed screening process. And so companies pick up on the wrong things, and a lot of great people don't end up in a company's funnel. At Skillist, we envision a more inclusive, effective way to hire, where anyone who can do the job is able to apply. But more importantly, or just as importantly, companies actually have the right signals to identify who is a match for what they're looking for and everyone has a fair opportunity at meeting that employer and getting that job. We're the team to make this happen. We've helped companies rethink hiring. We've worked with job seekers in education and workforce development programs, and we've built technology products that have scaled to millions of users. So our solution, Skillist, is a common language for job seekers and employers. 
we really think, our, think of ourselves as a job application system that allows both sides to communicate clearly and effectively about skills. Here's how it works. When we work with employers, the first thing we do is create better alignment, highlighting the skills a company actually cares about in a given role. For example, things like customer service are critical to be a support specialist. But instead of just putting that in a job description, we make it actionable. So when a person goes to apply for a job, instead of being asked to upload their, their transactional or chronological resume, they're actually engaging and providing the information a company cares about. It's like a productized, structured interview. And finally, we create an identity-blind, skills-based review interface for the employer. So again, they're focusing on the information that actually matters instead of being caught up on a person's name or where they went to school or other characteristics that might not actually be related to their ability. We found that this is tremendously effective. For job seekers, like Lori, who had worked as a manager at Dunkin' Donuts and was able to translate her abilities into getting a full-time customer service job, our process helps job seekers understand how to present their skills. And we found that applicants are up to 15 times more likely to receive interviews and make it past that initial screen when they apply through Skillist as opposed to dropping a resume online. But beyond that, it's tremendously effective for employers in terms of both inclusion and efficiency. Our customers over the last year have seen that they've been able to offer a significantly more diverse pool of applicants and actually pick people who are more likely to pass phone screens and receive offers when using this as the top of the funnel screening method. We've also seen tremendous recognition from market experts in the field. Uh, so over the last year, after going through the Learn Launch Accelerator program, you know, we were named an innovator to watch by JFF Labs, selected as the top skills development and opportunity matching company by the MIT Inclusive Innovation Challenge, uh, and were named a winner in the KPR Capital People, Oper People Operations Technology Competition. In 2019, we worked with a small group of customers and were able to land and expand to the point that they have become referral customers who evangelize us and have expressed a desire to move to annual subscription contracts. We did over $100,000 in revenue last year and see that growing significantly over the next year as we move to these larger deals. Um, but our focus is really twofold in 2020. First, we're launching a brand new version of our product. We've worked closely with our customer advisory board to build out a new interface that works much better for recruiters and is really deeply integrated into the tools they use today. Um, but beyond that, we want to take this out to market. So do a lot more sales, grow our accounts, and also really push to, to grow the narrative and the movement around skills-based hiring. Uh, longer term, we see a tremendous opportunity and potential here. The first step in the process is really building the skills-based application platform where any job seeker looking for these kinds of roles can apply most effectively be considered. But longer term, we see the potential to build a skills-based talent marketplace where all job seekers are indexed by skills and can match to the relevant opportunities at a number of different employers. And in the final phase, working with learning providers who are also moving to competency-based teaching and training to actually plug learners' skill gaps and help people upskill and find the right pathways. Um, Thank you for being here. Uh, tremendously excited to share more about our work. Uh, we'll also be here tomorrow, so please feel free to reach out. We're always looking for partners. Thank you. Alex and her team refuse to think small. They want to lead the new category of career management. Boldly knows that to manage careers, you need to measure and engage first, and then personalize career pathways. So they are moving beyond just assessing skills and competencies to mapping forward-looking capabilities and learning experiences. Helping multinational companies address these issues requires a high-tech and high-touch approach, connecting digital resources with human support, coaches, and mentors. Boldly has already delivered scalable modules to its customers, including a mentor framework, coaching skills for managers, coach procurement, and business intelligence visualization. Alex and her co-founder are former senior execs at Corn Ferry with backgrounds in organizational psychology and technology. Let's welcome this wicked smart Aussie with a really bold platform. So about three and a half years ago, my co-founder Rebecca and I saw a perfect storm coming, probably one that many of you saw as well, which was that technological advancements were far outstripping the rate at which we could develop skills in the workplace. You've heard a lot about this today. Skills are an essential building block for our future workplace, but we can't build them fast enough. So what we would say is that while they are essential, they are not enough. We need to be thinking about capabilities and thinking about how we build those capabilities for the future of work. 
we define capabilities as not just those skills, but also the experiences and the mindsets that are, are required for undisclosed future of work. We need to be operating within this ambiguity and know that we can't necessarily map ahead the skills within this decade, let alone within this century. So we need to be starting to build these capability journeys into the unknown. The current market in response to workplace learning and development does not respond to that ambiguity. We are looking at hard skills on this landscape. We've spoken with well over 200 CHROs by this point, and they tell us that we need to connect these dots. We need to be able to drive insights from assessment through the learning journey into the internal mobility space. They want to see us consolidate this market. We shouldn't be selling standalone assessment that disconnects from learning, that disconnects from mobility. And that is what we're here to do with Boldly. We start with a suite of assessment to look at the capability of this individual and their future readiness into the future of work. Once we have that information, we allow them to map the future career pathway for their industry and their roles so that they can understand the journey ahead of them. We then layer in the development that's required for that future. So not just the classroom training, the e-learning, but also the on-the-job experiences that they're going to require, teamwork, cross-cultural communication, everything that they'll require from a project experience. They're able to report on their progress back to the organisation. And then, of course, because these careers are so dynamic, we have careers bots and goal-setting processes that allow them to reset and recalibrate on where that career is headed. The user experience for the employee is designed with social media style flow. So the individual is receiving constant information about how their career works, insights from media, learning, coaches and mentors, as well as their assessment insights along the way. We have, as the video said, both a high touch and a high tech approach. So while the platform is designed so that the individual user has self-serve to all the career resources they need, they're able to review uh, insights from their reporting without a practitioner. We do see opportunity to layer in those live coaches and mentors when they need a higher, a higher acceleration of the learning for that workplace. So how do we deliver? We've got over 4,800 coaches already in behind our platform. We have a clear approach to quality control and how we vet those individuals, making us the largest global database of coaches today. We've already mapped 11,000 jobs for the capabilities that will be required into the future, which is what allows us to create that recommendations engine for those future of work. Now, we operate through an open API. Because we are the platform layer that brings together those coaches, those career maps, we need to be able to work with the most flexible and the most dynamic assessment suites, as well as learning content. So we maintain the flexibility of the platform through that API model. And clients want to be able to measure what we're doing for them into the future. So we have proprietary measures of return on development investment that deliver impact in, form, in informing the client and giving them that zoom out visibility of their talent pools around performance, deployment of skills, engagement and innovation. Our strategy is to be the brand in capabilities. We can see that if we can deliver the best suite of career resources, expand globally and really be able to connect people through to the best content through those that API system, that we're creating the network effect between employees, companies, and coaches, so that we can effectively create enough data to show people how careers are going to work in this 21st century. We're already live with premier brands with about 300, 320K in total contract value to date. We're only three months into implementation, so we're already seeing great, great traction. We've got fantastic brands lined up who are already wanting to use us. These are conglomerates who want to be able to see and have this visibility at scale. We're in partnership with great assessment providers, learning content providers and careers resources to provide that dynamic careers marketplace. Now our team are fantastic uh, professionals in the future of work. We all come from backgrounds as organisational psychologists from HR tech, change management and large scale business process outsourcing. So we know how to scale this business and to actually make an impact on the future of careers. So we'll also be at the Future of Work showcase tomorrow and I look forward to speaking with you then. Thank you. Thank you all for hanging in with us. I am not a fast moving teacher. I am not Jacqueline, um, but I do want to thank everyone. I want to particularly thank uh, our partners at the Accelerator, all of the participants in Demo Day who did a fantastic job. Let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you.
I do hope all of you will come back tomorrow at 8.30. Um, hold on for one more second. I have no drink tickets to bribe you with, but Ben is not going to give you your drink tickets until I do want to invite um, our partners from AWS Educate up for a quick announcement. Uh, Katie? I think it is, yeah. Okay. So, hi guys, my name is Katie Heritage and I'm the global leader for AWS EdStart. It is Amazon Web Services virtual accelerator for ed tech startups. And I am so excited to be with you guys. You guys have done an amazing job. The conference is outstanding. You guys have done better this year than I thought you could ever do last year. And next year, I just can't wait for it because each year you guys top yourselves. And I don't even know how you do it because it just, it's oh, amazing. But we have a very exciting announcement for this year. Um, AWS Ed Start is working to build a global network of organizations that are investing in and supporting ed tech startups around the world. And so I'm very excited to announce that we are onboarding Learn Launch as one of our founding collaborators. So welcome to the family. Yes. Somebody put this on Twitter. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yes, so we are so excited to work with you all, work with all of your startups, and work with all of you. So if you have any questions, we are right out there. Um, we would love to get to know all of you guys and continue to do all this amazing work with the companies that are revolutionizing education around the world. Great. So thank you for having us, and welcome to the family. Thank you.